Okay, I guess I'll go through this web page. I also printed out um, just a little piece of information. This I think this is probably from the, the, the forum from the Quick Cam. There's a couple handy commands. I just point these things out because the, the commands are going to be archaic to a new user. And they're not necessarily something I, at my, even at my experience level, I, I don't know offhand all the time. So, um, which, what this lady Hawkeye, no, Hawkeye lady posted, and her only post, just, it's just a quick way to figure out um, what you, what Linux has detected. That's step one, right? So, um, let's see, LS. She has LS, L. Shift F, and then Dev. Audio. You're going to need to know what devices are actually being detected. So I got that plugged in. I've got two of them. So how do I know which one's which? Well, let's see, I'll unplug it. And if I still have two, why it's not detecting anything, and I have two audio devices in my computer. If there's only one, then I know which one it is, right? <laughs> and there's only one. And it's got a four next to it. So, um, <coughs> I'll show you something else that I did. That I don't know if it makes a difference. If you look there where it's got C, RW, slash RW, slash RW, and the one above it's got CRW, slash rw dot 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 um those are those are permissions and if i not root so i'll go as root what that means is is that the owner of the audio device which is probably root and members of the group root can can read and write to, to audio that means they could make sound and the audio device and they could <laughs> they could hear sound through the audio device, um, but not others that are not part of that group. And it, I don't, not quite sure who the owner is. I bet if I um, just did an ls dash l dev audio without the f, well, I'm not going to have that. Okay, here's what I did. I, I gave I potentially gave myself permission to use it. You see the one on the bottom there, it's got others also able to read and write. And of course, it's not an executable file, so you um, don't need to execute a device. <laughs> it's not a program, so you don't, you know, execute means run the program. That's what I did, and I also, if I didn't, I also did the same kind of thing for video, and in fact, it's probably a good idea to run this ls, uh, and it doesn't matter if you use root in this case. I got that backwards, and I got both those backwards. Okay. Minus L. 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 F. Dev. Video. It's plugged in. Video. <laughs> Gave that away. <laughs> Dev video star. Now, if you if you tap if you tapped autocomplete, you'd see there's a video zero, but, you know, it, it shows it. Now, in this case, I don't have permission, so I may as well. <coughs> Dev, and, again, audio complete works, so if I, probably if I type vid and tab, yeah, it'll complete it for me. There, it did it. There, I'm done. So I've given myself permission. Okay, so we got two, two things down. The kernel's detected that this camera it works the kernels detected this camera has both an audio and a video device but uh, do we have the drivers installed for for this well um, UVC okay so it looks like this whole procedure is to get you to be able to compile a driver called UCV video if I'm right and I don't see where and a program called UVC DYN control and basically if you run that program uh, slash L it'll it'll tell you what you got right so um, just just to see if I need to go through all this stuff again I have a I have Ubuntu 10.4 
Okay, let's see if I have to even go through this stuff. I'm root, so if I type U, V, C, and tab, okay, I'm getting nothing. Uh, when I hit tab, it isn't completing it for me. If I just, you know, for argument's sake, D, Y, N, C, T, R, L, minus L, not found. So I don't have this in here, and I think I spelled it right. I remember having it, so what I have to do now is I have to follow this procedure up here. Um, so, it says install the prerequisites. So, uh, in my case, I have already given myself root access in Ubuntu versus doing the sudo thing every time and doing the password thing every time. And conveniently, I can copy that and I can just basically uh, paste it. And I'm going to press enter and it's going to what aptitude is, it's also apt. You know, you type apt get install in the name of package, such as subversion or CMake and all these other things they think I need. Um, <coughs> it'll download it for you and install it so long as you're connected to the internet and you have apt install and your sources list are fairly up to date. Um, that's what it does. So, um, now, their focus here is seems to be on this web page is Ubuntu 804, but I know at least for as much as video, and it looks like all this is doing is getting the video to work. Um, the, the, the procedures here work work fine. So um, now, if you look at apt, you know on the left it's got eight percent of so eight percent of everything's been downloaded, but on the right it's got one, two, three. Eventually that. Uh, to the right of the 490 kilobytes, it's going to uh, go above the number on the left, <laughs> surpass it at some point, because we're not completely done. And uh, it says I got 4 minutes and 47 seconds left on this download. So one of the good things with Linux is that you've got applications that people around the world are just kind of collaborating together, just, okay, I'll just decide, okay, I'm going to put this application up here, this little utility CMake, I'll have that on my server, and then some other person has, you know, maybe, um, XML2 dev, or package config, you know, all these things, <laughs> just host it on, okay, while this is doing this, I'll go over some other little useful tools, so we went over this, we've got the ls minus lf, this just lets us know whether Linux kernels detected the thing, but now I'm going to look at uh, this is guy's name is Lars Strand's blog, and I'm not going to necessarily look at his uh, checkout because he might be using a different driver set than I am. I know this driver set works. I'm going to go with this procedure, but I am going to um, look at some other um, useful uh, commands you can use. And guess what? You can open up another terminal if you want, or, or shell. I shouldn't say terminal. I think it's bad. <laughs> I, I, I might be wrong. I mean, uh, okay, so I'm going to unplug it. I'm going to plug it back in. And there's this thing called D message. D M E S G. And these are all the messages that come out from the kernel. And what's it doing? Okay, up here you can see me where I disconnected the USB drive, and then uh, it's saying that um, it's it's now found one. So there's a UVC video driver already in there, I think, and it's assi it's assigned the device as um, to uh, if I, to the subdirectory uh, devices PCI by this ID to blah, blah blah input input nine but then there's something about I don't know what the ca cannot set frequency I guess this camera has various frequencies that it could run at I've got USB video I don't see anything about USB core now the classes change okay let's, but anyway so I've got an idea that the kernel is detecting and I even have the driver in there that I think part of the procedure in this whole thing is to compile the driver 
Um, what I don't see is the UVC video command, which is a whole different thing. Uh, whether it's necessary or not, I don't know. Okay, the next command he brings up, but I do know what I need to do uh, to be done. Okay, I'll stop here and go to the next command.